Mystery Train is a film from 1989 written and directed by Jim Jarmusch, and I picked up the Criterion Blu-ray a few years ago from a used movie store that unfortunately is gone nowadays. Rest in peace, physical media stores. Jim Jarmusch is a director that I really admire, and I've seen about half of his filmography at this point, and there's always something to appreciate in his films, Mystery Train being no different. The film is basically about three different stories set in Nashville, Tennessee that all somewhat intersect at the end. Each of the stories being marked with a chapter title. The first story is about a Japanese couple who are fans of the Nashville music scene who come to the city on a train to tour Sun Records. After their touristy day, they head back to a cheap motel to stay the night. When we jump into the second story about a woman who meets a creepy guy and basically tells him to buzz off, coming out of the diner, she notices him and another guy with him as they start to confront her. She takes off running from them and ends up at the cheap motel as well, the same one that the Japanese couple are at, and there she meets Didi, a woman with no money trying to get a room. The two end up sharing a room when one woman sees the spirit of Elvis. It's a running gag throughout the movie that Elvis is literally everywhere in the movie. He's constantly in pictures or paintings, and most of the cast is somewhat sick of Elvis, but the one woman who sees the spirit is actually like a huge fan. It's a pretty funny running gag as the film goes on. The third story is about a man who people nicknamed Elvis. He and a friend are getting drunk at a bar since this Elvis's woman left him. After waving around a gun, the one friend calls another friend to come pick him up. The new friend, along with Elvis's brother-in-law, played by Steve Buscemi, of all people, pick him up and head to the liquor store. There, Elvis shoots the clerk, and the trio run off to hide at the cheap motel. This really should have been called, like, Mystery Motel rather than Mystery Train. There's barely a train in the movie. Joking aside, there's a lot to appreciate here. The film is shot nicely, the performances are great, and the film is filled with Jarmusch's dry humor. If you haven't seen a Jim Jarmusch film before, honestly, this wouldn't be a bad entry to get into his style and career. A lot of Jarmusch isms, <laughs> that's a weird word, Jarmusch isms, can be found throughout. His rock and roll style is steeped into his character designs and their actions. The story being centered around Nashville feels very Jarmushy, and Jarmush has an almost somewhat slower nature to his films. Characters aren't exactly fast moving or fast talking, but this stilted movement helps convey that dry tone of humor. And when I mean dry sense humor, I mean like desert dry. which for me is something I love, and I constantly find his films to be humorous, or even at times hilarious, but I can see where his style of humor might not be for everyone. One scene that had me laughing was when the Japanese couple give the bellhop a plum, later talking to his boss, his boss tells him not to eat it, and then just out of nowhere eats it in one bite. They also call back to this joke, where at random the boss just asks for another one. Say, do you have any more of those Japanese plums, or any other exotic fruits? The whole Elvis is everywhere gag I also found to be really funny as the film just kept bringing it up over and over and over and over and over and over again. I do have some issues with this film though. For one, the audio is pretty bad. There were moments where I felt like you couldn't hear what the actors were saying at all. There's some noticeable noise grain and some moments where the foley sounded too sharp if that makes any sense. My biggest issue with the film is just the structure of the film as a whole. This could almost be considered an anthology film. One of the biggest selling points with me with anthology films is the larger pool of talent that's put together to make the film. Different ideas that may or may not combine into a larger narrative. but having that different pool of talents and styles is usually what makes them interesting. Interesting or not though, the structure of anthologies where you go from one story to another has always felt to me way longer than it actually is because I've always found anthologies to have a somewhat disjointed pacing. You're constantly breaking up the flow of the film to present new themes and characters and story in a way that always feels like the first part of a movie. So with every storyline progressing, you kind of reset the story for the new entry this making the pacing to me feeling much longer than it actually is. This is just something that gets to me anytime I watch a film that has a structure like this, no matter how enjoyable it is. By no means did it ruin the film, but it is something for me to take into consideration when rating a film. With Mystery Train having a similar structure where it's basically three short films that intertwine at the end, it has that feeling of starting over at points that did make the runtime feel longer, even though I was really enjoying the film. This is something that may be fixed on another viewing, and I would definitely watch this again. Also, I didn't notice until writing this, but the night clerk boss is played by Screamin' Jay Hawkins, which I think is pretty cool. You. 
Overall though, this is a pretty enjoyable, easygoing film with a lot of style and a great sense of dry humor that I would definitely recommend if it sounds interesting to you. It would be a great starting point if you're wanting to get into more of Jim Jarmusch's films, even if this one's not necessarily my favorite from him. It's still a pretty good film that I'm giving an 8 out of 10 to.